Hi everyone good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are my name is pankaj singra and as you know me by now i am a proud fintrammer aaj ka episode hum un sab bachchon ke liye leke aaye hain jo bacche acca ki international value ko samajhna chahte hain many of the students have been reaching out to me to really understand that do we have any success stories of international international recognition of acca sir koi australia di lao ya koi sir canada di koi success story lao sir batao to sahi ki aisi bhi koi success story hai ya nahi to chalo tusi kya te sir ne maan leta aa chalde ha aaj dekhde ha ek canada di success story Yes my friend today i have i have an esteemed esteemed guest today Abdul Mukit Khan yes my friend he is the one who did his acca in india yahi kari mere bachcho aur fir now he is working as a acca in one of the multinational in canada to tusi kya te sir ne maan leta aaj gal karange bachcho ऐसी इंटरनेशनल सक्सेस स्टोरी दी जो हम सब के लिए एक बहुत और बहुत बड़ी लर्निंग है तो चलें शुरू करें जंप इन यस सर हाय अब्दुल हाय हाय Hi Pankaj how are you Very very warm welcome and glad that you're joining the team of Fintrammers thank you very much for your time Thank you for calling me And and what time it is you know I'm sorry you know you, you are in Canada right now at this point in time and I know I would have bothered you late at your night but what time exactly it is right now Uh it's 9:45 pm so not too late not too late <laughs> but thank you thank you very much for taking out time you know it's it's pleasure to have you here and i i i tell you there is a big time reason why we really wanted and requested you to be here is that many of the students many of the students really want to understand the opportunities that acca has across the globe and then you know you doing you know a full fledged acca job in 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 canada you know was one of the the big 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 reason why we you know really requested you and thanks for really coming on board it's my pleasure anything for the fraternity and and the students and thank you so uh, you know abdul will 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 run away and get into the the detailing of you know of your uh, career of your journey and and in getting on to the details we'll get on there but the first thing is is more to understand a brief about yourself and let's kick start from there and then we'll jump on the the questions that i have in my list which many of the students have to really ask you so <laughs> why don't we kick start with briefing your your briefing up you know in terms of understanding you So I was born in India. I was uh, in India for maybe about nine months or so, less than less than a year. And that's when I moved to Middle East, and all my schooling and education was in the Middle East, um, up until twelfth. And after which I moved back to India to study on my uh, professional courses. So I moved to Chennai, and I was I started off with BCom and ACCA at the same time, both at the base level. um the bcom was correspondence so i didn't need to go for uh, on, for go for classes i used to only go for the final exam and i used to spend full time studying for my uh, acca while uh, while doing my um, three years of per so i believe i finished my acca in the year 2017 and after which uh soon after which uh, i moved over to canada and applied for a job so it's about so i have about 6 years of experience and uh acc completed with, along with bcom now that's exciting and very exciting for our students let me tell you that there are a few things that i i i could gazed out of it and i really want to call that out you 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 were born outside india and then you came to india for doing uh, I'm sorry. You were born in India, and then you went yes. out to you know out of India for doing your schooling, and then you again came back to India 
for your professional professional uh, thing and when you yes. started off your bcom you started acca in parallel that's right yeah oh okay both are the fundamental um, levels so you know maybe a very different league and a very different uh, stance to ask but uh, mm-hmm. um, you know what made you come to india for professional and and for graduation course <laughs> just just for my <laughs> my uh, curiosity there went many acca providers in kuwait so i was in kuwait um when i finished my 12th and i already knew what i wanted to study so the question would be why did i um, go to a city in india where i don't have my relatives so i actually went to the south india and north in the mumbai where i have most of my relatives uh, but but to answer your question there aren't many um, acc providers in kuwait at that point in time so i had to come back to my home country okay and did you did you so by your you know by saying this you effectively had that at the back of your mind um, that mm-hmm. you have to do have to do acc right in class 11 that is right yeah and what what made you have that you know out of my understanding uh, in terms of you know what really pushed you to uh, to to believe that that's going to be the right field that i really want to jump on in i was always interested in accounts and business so so i already knew i had to do acca um i already i also had my pr um which is the permanent residency of canada and oh. i always knew that i would be going to settle in canada the dilemma i would say that i had was whether i should do acca or cp of canada i picked acca because acca has around 5 uh, mra between different countries uae cpa or C- cpa canada ca australia hong kong and malaysia so because cpa canada is already included it's a better idea to go for uh, acca so where i can uh, i can finish my acca as well as get my cpa canada without having tried any exams true and it's always good to have a global qualification then being That's the true. country yeah. country specific one so you know i i agree with that mm. seems you're liking this video if yes then why don't you subscribe to our channel fintram global and press the bell icon also do press the like it really motivates us and share it with all your friends who would love to watch that so okay now coming on coming back to your story you know you came back to india started your bcom uh, started your acca see it is giving me goosebumps i'm telling you you know in terms of you know how did you how did you really carry this forward and really reach where you reached but um, you know once so you when when you just started it and kick started it and and, and started uh, working through how how did it go in terms of you know you uh, doing acca along with bcom how how easy or how difficult it was i would say bcom was quite simple uh acca um the fundamentals were quite um straightforward if you knew the if you understand have a good grip over over the basic concepts and fundamentals uh the struggle i would say i had was in uh, the professional level p7 uh, audit because I, i i was not really good at audit so it's my own um lack of interest for the subject i would say and not the on the subject in general but uh the fundamentals were a breeze through i some pa- some papers i wrote some attempts i wrote three uh papers at time f- f7 f8 f9 uh generally i've written at least two papers at a time so in order to finish my uh course faster it was only in p levels where i decided that i should take one paper at a time um that in p4 and p7 with the two papers i was struggling with and that's when i wrote them individually and by the end so other than that, great, sorry go ahead sorry mm-hmm. now i was just going to say other than that it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, uh, a worth while course i would say it wasn't too difficult it, at the same it wasn't too easy but it was uh, it was doable and tell me uh, by the time you completed your graduation you know 3 years of mm-hmm. graduation how many papers of acca you cleared that till that point in time um i would have finished my bcom in 2016 so by then i should have finished my two levels of um, 
so that would be p1 and p2 i should have, I, i would have finished p1 and p2 okay so effectively you had done all your uh, foundation or the knowledge level paper yes. then you did all your skill level papers so 3 yes plus 6 of skill so you have completed the nine papers and you are you already completed two papers of the professional level you know so effectively yes. uh 9 plus 2 11 papers you you were done uh, till that point in time yeah back then uh p1 and p3 were two different subjects now you have uh, spl which yes. merges the two papers so that back then it was two different papers yes so effectively you did p1 p2 as in you know p1 p2 were done till that point in time and then you yep. took on other subjects after 2016 and that yes. you completed in um, uh, how much time as in how much time do you, you took uh, to complete um, all rest of them i i finished um, my essay in, in december 17 attempts so i've written three more attempts after that it was so in march 17 yeah so effectively we can say 9 to 12 months after your graduation yeah. you completed anything and everything that you had to yes i kind of extended because i did not stop with my um work uh to gain exp- to gain the experience to per so uh i i so i can re- reduce the um exam attempts that's why i only wrote like three three yeah yeah i still actually wrote three attempts i wrote march september and december so i just missed the june attempt i guess oh and and we'll come on to per you know that's again something which is very relevant for the folks to understand but if i'm not wrong you know and and i saw that on your credentials that you scored a rank all india rank 1 right in one of the yeah. subject of professional level yeah that was p3 yes which is now sbl by all means yeah which is by sbl right <laughs> so you scored a all india rank 1 in sbl you know for all practical yeah. purposes yeah Oh my god that's amazing and 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 um, you know many many congratulations even after 4 years so of your qualification <laughs> many 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 call, you know congratulations for that scoring all india rank 1 is is too good man and uh, you know we we are glad to have you here and and share your thoughts with our students and did you had any world rank also uh, you know since you had all india rank 1 did you had any world rank also in relation to it uh in my 12th grade um there was a subject called um um uh, web technology computer media web technology i i really first called uh, world rank over there it would be it would be world rank it would be country it would be uh, kuwait topper no that for that one subject that that was in class 12 you're saying yes oh my god so and you know, the mm-hmm. so and the p3 would be uh, india one and all india uh, sorry world would be i think 8 or 9 i i, I forget now i, world I think world rank 8 for the p3 p you know yes. sbl you saying yeah oh. so sun started shining at the in, in class 12th only <laughs> if i may say for the lack of better word <laughs> uh just been lucky i guess <laughs> no no it's 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 being modest but you know of course you know getting a rank certainly uh certainly is not a function of being luckier it's it certainly um uh is symbolizes that the, you know the kind of effort you know one would have taken and and of course having air one the all india rank one is 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 too good you know it's not 3 4 5 it's being the top it's being the top cream and did did that help you in terms of uh, you getting noticed in the market you getting noticed um, you know in your fraternity you know in the acca fraternity by any chance did it did it really uh, and how and, and yeah i'm not without doing going though and maybe i'm stopping my my thoughts how did your you know family felt for it I think that is more. Important. Oh, um yeah, none of us were expecting it. Um I'll tell you a funny story uh for um uh, my P3 exam which is SBL now. Uh there was a mistake in the um registration. I I did um select that as my September sorry as my March attempt. But when I got my docket um it wasn't P3 wasn't mentioned. It, w- it was only P1 and I was a little surprised. So I followed up with the institute to confirm whether I am writing or whether it was just a glitch on my and the paper didn't go through. So I got a confirmation only 10 days before the exam that yes I will be writing and they issued a uh, alternate docket for me. So uh so I only figured out that I I get uh, 10 days to kind of actually go through the subject properly. 
And yeah, my family was really happy. None of us were expecting it. We, we would be, we would have been just as happy as uh, getting pass mark with that, on that subject. And and you know, I think irony with me would have you know has been <laughs> that you know I never lost. I you know my docket never got lost. Otherwise, I would have also got some rank onto it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <jokes> <laughs> but, but it's it's glad to hear that you know how it happened and you know uh, i don't know if it is it if it is uh, uh, if it can be answered but uh, mm-hmm. uh, do you think that you 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 did a different preparation for for being an air one in comparison to a normal prep that you would have been doing for the other subjects or it was the same and you know it um like, Mm, in that particular subject, um, uh, I'm not sure how SBL is framed right now, but the business analysis paper had about 60 business models, 70 business models, SWOT, uh, different ex- different models. So um, you never know what model can be asked in exam. So it all comes down to fundamentals. If you understand what the examiner is expecting from you, and you're gonna nail that point home. Uh, that 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 alone would be uh, crucial for uh, um, getting good marks on that paper. Uh, because there are assumed there are like fifty other models, and y- you would you would think it's the other. You, you need to talk about the other model. You might only get half the marks because again, it is relevant, but it's not exactly what the examiner is looking for. So the idea would be to kind of understand the um, question more than uh, um, spending time on writing what you think would be right. I think, I think you nailed it, nailed it very well. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I keep saying it to the SBL students that, you know, the, these business analysis or the, you know, uh, these, these subjects are very uh, fundamental and commonsensical subjects or commonsensical topics. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really warrant you to, memorize the uh, the models memorize the theories you know it it actually warrants you to have the practical application of your uh, of your mind onto that particular scenario and giving examiner what he exactly needs he doesn't need you to to call out the potter's model or you know x y z i'm just not going in there but what mm-hmm. he really wants you to really answer is that what exactly you would do as a leader in that particular situation and that's where you know um, uh, it, it really helps you um, under you know getting the right nuance of the situation and answering in the you know that in the best possible way and i think you nailed it very well that you really have to understand what examiner is really looking at and then giving back the examiner exactly what he really needs yeah that's true Agreed. So uh, again, you know, not not leaving the string. Uh, coming on to uh, you know your uh, so you did your ACCA in nine months after your graduation. Then what? You know, what did you thought? What what's next? Um, after that, I moved over to um, to Canada, but I, I spent about a year. So by then, I was done with my three years of um, P- PER. And I worked with the company for another one year. And soon after having been about like three or four years of experience, I moved over to Canada because you need some kind of experience. Uh, it's always better to have some kind of experience when you move fresh to a country. So I moved here and I started looking for a job and I got a job within a month. Within um, a month? So, yeah, within a month, it was start, <laughs> my starting date. So that would include um, all interviews, and uh, any follow-up questions, and uh, yeah, so within a month. And they, they, uh, they. So I'm presuming, without even um, uh, you know asking you, because considering that you got a job in a month, they are really, mm-hmm. really recognizing ACC as one of the noble profession that they need. Yeah, ACC is well recognized here for sure. Um, many, many big companies uh, recog- uh, value ACC as good as. Uh, CPA Canada, because they understand that if you can apply for CPA Canada without writing any exam, it has to be obviously equal in value. And is there a is there a pact between or an MRA between uh, Canadian CPA and 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 you? I know you mentioned it, but what exactly that MRA is in between 
So CPA Canada and ACC, if you can throw some light on it. This MRA, I believe, is valid up until April 30th, 2021. Um, I believe um, they renew every five years or three years. I, I don't remember the exact duration, but this was a renewal of last uh, MRA. And I believe this again would be renewed. So um, the prerequisites for applying would be you need to finish your ACCA. You have to be a member and not an affiliate. Um, you also need to um, have a bachelor's degree. And that's about it. You apply, uh, they, they, they review your application and you have to complete a module from the CPA website, which I think would be like a combination of tax, law, accounting, a little bit of, um, little bit of those subjects. And I think that's about it. You get your uh, um, CPA right after. I haven't applied myself yet. So I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm missing a step or two, but roughly that's about that's that's the uh, process. But do you really need it now, considering you know you are where you are and you're doing what you're doing? Do you really need it now? Do you think that you need it? Exactly, exactly. Why I haven't applied it? Applied it yeah, <laughs> I I thought so. I thought so because if everything is going fine and you know you're getting what mm-hmm. your you know what your uh, expectation is, then why to really jump on and do something more? when it is not required. But it's good to know at least for the students that, you know, the Canadian CPA has an MRA with the ACCA Mm -hmm. and just by completing few modules and, you know, one of few, you know, few steps, as you mentioned, you know, one can, one can really apply for, for being the CPA. Yeah. I'm, I'm again, just going back was because one thing that you mentioned, uh, and I don't want to lose on it, um, Abdul, and hold your thoughts for you know, uh, in terms of you know what you were about to say. But one thing that you mentioned was the PER that you completed your PER while you were doing uh, uh, ACCA. What was that? Yes. What, you know, what was that that you chose uh, along your graduation so that you know at least in three years of time you're you're getting rid of the practical experience requirement. So what did you do? Uh, it was uh, any any. It was any uh, other. Where, you, where anyone would join. Uh, I, I worked in an uh, accounting and uh, consultancy firm where uh, um, I had really good mentors who guided me towards uh, different business uh, projects, business valuation, and uh, a little bit of internal audit. So it was, it was, a, it was a good uh, three-year experience. There was a little bit of uh, government projects as well. Effectively. It, it was, mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it, it was just uh, a lot of experience in three years that um, uh, that kept me going with the with the company. And it was like, so can I consider that to be a normal articleship kind of a thing, which mm-hmm. a chartered accountancy student does in India, uh, in terms yeah. of you know that those three years that they needly need to spend with an accounting or a consulting firm, wherein they would be doing the normal audit, the accounting, the the internal audits, the external audits, the stat audits, and whatnot. So, is that is that what you're saying? Isn't you no know, that you started off with in terms of you know you joining an accounting firm and and being part of that firm and being guided by your mentors? Is that what you mentioned? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mentioned, oh. and that is accepted both by CA as you mentioned and uh, ACC in terms of PR. Oh, and you don't have to do anything. It is just you know that they they accept it on the face of it, or you have to take some prior approvals from ACCA that this is what you're doing and so on and so forth. So there are no prior approvals. So there are two, um, two uh, options when you choose uh, a place where you want to work. Uh, there are a few ACCA approved employers and you have not approved employers. If you have, uh, if you're working for someone who is an approved employer, you, there is uh, there is just one, um, one page, one page, um, sign off you need at the end of the uh, duration for which you worked and that's about it so there are no um, there are no other prerequisites and I think you can get a list of all the ACCA uh, approved employers on the ACCA website if it is not an ACCA approved employer you have uh, nine um, topics what you need to uh, give a brief description about around 300 to 500 words uh, which covers um, basic points to um, advanced um, scenarios where you work, including uh, accounting, audit, taxation, uh, so on and so forth, management budgets. 
there's a total list of, I think, 22 areas out of which you only need to select nine. So in general, you would have completed, uh, you would have at least nine, of, nine areas of experience no matter where you um, go for your article ship. And you fill in those nine areas, as in you have to fill in those nine areas in terms of what you have done in those nine areas and have you yes. to submit to ACCA? Yeah, so um, once you submit it, uh, you can submit uh, as and when you finish or at, at the end of every six months, one year, three years, it's it's your call. Uh, ACC usually recommends to do it more frequently before you kind of lose track of what you're doing. And um, I think they approve it within a month or two. And that's it, they, they, they mark it approved on your ACC portal. And do they check the same with your uh, uh, mentor Employer? or? Yes. So there would be two accounts, uh, a student's account and a mentor's account. So students, student will, uh, will um, send an invite to the employer uh, stating that uh, I am working under you, you are my mentor, and submit the brief description about the nine topics. And this email would go to the employer. He would have to create an account with ACCA, with my ACCA. And he would review the 300 words to 500 words on uh, description you give for each topic and sign off. So this after sign off goes back to your account saying signed off by your employer. And once you have, um, if you completed, you can submit it to uh, ACCA. Hmm. And that is only for the non-approved ACCA employees. Yes. If you are an ACCA yes. employee, then you don't need anything. You just have you to- You don't like... need anything, yeah. Uh, okay. But effectively, if I now that you have done that, do you think that mm -hmm. any any student who is doing any article shape or any accounting job or a reporting job in India would not would need uh, to do something more, or that will suffice for you know what ACCA need as PER for three years? Oh, that that, that should suffice. That should suffice more than more than enough. Yeah. And it's, and I may make it sound very complicated, nine topics, thoughts to write, but it's nothing, it's nothing of that. So, I mean, as, as you start typing, uh, um, because you're working in it, I would, I, I, I struggled to kind of compress my 800, 900 words to 500 words. So the writing is not an issue. The experience is not an issue. It all depends. Uh, as long as you uh, gain the experience, uh, it should be fine. Uh, okay. So it's 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 not it's not at all tough for all. for one not to you know get the PER, and which yeah, yeah. which effectively makes um, this course even more lucrative, right? Because you mm -hmm. can work side sure. by side, you can give exam one by one, you can clear one by one, no group system, and so on and so forth, and your ACC, and then you are uh, very well needed by the market in terms of be it the Indian market now being the Canadian market too, with my friend being here. It's all the more and good opportunity to, for you know for us to really really work towards. I definitely agree. Very student friendly, I would say. And if I if I um, uh, Abdul have to ask you uh, more from the standpoint of now you being the uh, you know being the being the FinTram success story uh, you know uh, veteran that that you would be. Uh, what do you think uh, has been your, uh, and this is more for the students, what do you think has been your three broad uh, uh, areas wherein you feel that students should certainly, certainly work through for the, you know, from the standpoint of clearing ACC as soon as possible. So if you, you know, have to throw some light or, or guide our students in terms of, you know, how they should be progressing and what they should be doing, what those things would be. Uh, the first and foremost thing I would mention would be focusing on the on the fundamentals. Um, some, if you have an option to uh, take exemption, the first four papers or three, four, five papers, and uh, if you ask me, I would say don't don't take the don't take the uh, exemption, even though it's very tempting. Uh, if you if you see how ACCA grows it's each and every subject up, up until the final paper you would appreciate the 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 growth and the understanding of concepts the gradual understanding of concepts so um one point the first one would be definitely focus on the fundamentals and concepts the second uh that i would say is follow 
a single uh, publisher or a or a book provider uh switching between two would kind of uh, confuse um the students um it doesn't matter what you follow that does several um the several different providers as long as you stick with one and you're consistent with one uh you even even the even the uh, provider would increase gradually from uh, fundamentals to skills and to uh, and to professionals and that increase would be different rate uh if you if you switch from one service provider to another service provider um these were my two points for sure um any other tip mm. i would also i i think i can also mention that um how um writing one paper at a time or um two papers at, in one setting uh, is kind of like an student friendly or much more like an advantage for the student it can also be taken as a disadvantage if someone slacks off if i only write one paper in say december and i don't i skip march and skip june and write another paper only in september the gap is so long that you kind of lose the practice of taking exams and studying on a regular basis so i would suggest uh, definitely uh, keep be consistent with taking exams even if you're taking one exam uh, but be consistent at least um leave about at least um if if you're leaving any attempt in between don't leave more than more than 3 to 6 months I guess those would be my three uh, three suggestions. No thanks thanks for that and very helpful and I really relished uh you know some of the pointers that you bring in uh you know mm-hmm. uh, the things that you mentioned specifically from the standpoint of you know um one really not getting uh, more relaxed considering that it is only one paper one quarter yeah. because at times we tend to do that you know and it's human right the more flexibility you get the more flexible you become and more lazy you become at times so you're right bang on that you know that is something that one should really 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 be thinking about and if it is one paper one quarter it has to be like with full 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 force it it cannot be like you know uh yeah. being backlaid one on that but that's 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 absolutely clear the thing that you mentioned on the on the on the material in terms of referring one you know i, I think i i really want to mention this you know to you also just for you you know it it is more for your knowledge what fintram has done and this is very specific to you know what we have really bought in you know what we have done is that you know considering that there is a progression that is happening you know in between the publishers and in between the books because if you see x book it's going to be different and y book it's going to be different in terms of the yes. content and in terms of coverage and in terms of the level and in terms of the examples that have taken and so on and so forth so what we as fintram have done is that we have crafted our own material you know after oh. re- you know referring to the relevant books in terms of you know what's there and of course what have been the recommendations by acca in terms of you know the subject curriculum the syllabus areas the changes and what not what we have done is that we have crafted our own material which of course progresses from the level 1 to level 2 and level 3 in a very smart and and sober manner what it exactly inculcate is that it doesn't gives you plethora of or 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 dump of information like at times that you may get to see in these books because there is a too much of an information at times you know which is very difficult for yeah. a student to consume so what we have tried ensuring is that we make it very relevant you know in terms of you know what student exactly needs from the study notes standpoint and making it very 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 uh, i would say targeted to to the exam needs in addition to that what we have done is that we have crafted our own video course and marathon and it is more uh, abdul I'm, i'm just sharing it for your own uh, knowledge mm-hmm. standpoint uh, video course and marathon is you know wherein it difficulty comes on screen and he or she has been solving the concept questions the past examination questions the the comprehensive questions on the screen giving the students all the tips and tricks that they need from the standpoint of handling this exam in the best way possible so you don't have to refer and you know run from pole to pillar referring various exam kits in terms of going through you know what exactly are there how to solve what to solve seeing the solution and so on and so forth this video question marathon certainly helps you in terms of understanding what uh, what teacher has to say on to that question what examiner has to expect from that question so that you can learn and answer that there and then you know what i mean yeah and that i, I just wish been... something very sorry, ahead, sorry. Uh, sorry i was saying that has been something very very uh, uh helpful to the students in terms of thinking through this and and grasping it and answering that 
I, I was going to say, um, I just wish um, um, I kind of knew about Fintram about maybe five, six years ago, <laughs> where uh, um, I could have just got such materials because um, I, half the subjects I've done was self-study. So I, so I didn't have that kind of, uh, that kind of an advantage. But that's good. You've uh, taken the effort to um, make the most concise material. That's really good. Yes, because we our research team, you know, is, is completely working on this in terms of, you know, bringing and turning this into reality so that students should get what they really need. And of course, you know, video question marathon is anyway, like, you know, an icing on the cake in terms of giving them mm -hmm. what exactly they need from the standpoint of knowing the exam and answering the exam in the best possible way. All right. So what I have, you know, one, one last thing that I have, and again, again, you know, this is very personal to me and I really want to ask you this. Uh, what is the recipe, my friend, of becoming an AIR one? <laughs> I I haven't. I don't know if I'll be giving any exam in future now, which, which you know wherein I can really target something like that. But I really want that recipe for my kids, for my students, that they should know that yes, this is the recipe that Mr. Abdul Mukid Khan has to has to has to share. And I would humbly request you to please share something on those on that front. Um. If, um, based on your question, um, you asked something similar question in earlier, um, and it was running in the back of my mind, so I think I have a little better answer this time. Um, I would say one difference um, I noticed in my preparation for this, for the SPL paper, when compared to other papers was, uh, after I finished um, studying, say, like three or four chapters or so, uh, I explained the same chapters to a friend of mine. And this all happened a day before the exam where uh, I took four chapters at a set and kind of explained these four chapters uh, to another person. So I would say once you learn it and either you don't need to explain to someone else or you can even explain to yourself, that also kind of uh, um, makes you understand the concepts much better. So I think that should apply to most theory subjects, uh, if not practical. And uh, I, I think that would be one difference. Uh, so I should thank my friend who I was uh, <laughs> speaking with. <over. laughs> so you should thank your friend for, you know, friend for bearing you that point in time. In terms of <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, that's true. You know, I'm glad that you brought out that point. And I can tell you, you know, I, I can vouch for it because that's, I haven't mm -hmm. got the rank for it. But one thing that has really helped me all throughout my career, you know, whether it is my BCom honors, whether it is my chartered accountancy, whether it has been my CPA and, you know, ACC in terms of, you know, what we're seeing, when you explain something to someone, exactly. and, you know, then two minds are, come, you know, working on it. For example, yeah. if I've learned a concept, I will, of course, uh, you know, my mind will ask all the doubts that my mind can ask at that point in time. But if I'm explaining it to someone else, then uh -huh. that mind will also ask something which I may not be aware at that point in time, or my mind would not have asked that point in time. So effectively, yeah. it, it is like one plus one becomes 11 over here in terms of, you know, deliberating and calibrating on a topic. And that really uh, gives a very different uh, level of value add to yourself. And that's that's actually what made, makes teacher teachers very different in the market so teachers teachers also have the same mind but the thing is that they have explained so many concepts to so many students and they have asked so many doubts that now teacher has become more experienced in terms of handling all those doubts and th i think that's what in nutshell what we what you were trying to mean that you mm -hmm. when you explain to someone you become more experienced in terms of handling that as a topic and that certainly gives you an edge in the market yeah definitely well said so if somebody uh, is, is seeing the lecture and they want to explain some of the concept, either find a friend. And if you don't find a friend, uh, reach out to me. I'll get you a friend who can listen to you, who can, <laughs> who can understand you. And of course, deliberate with you what you exactly need from the standpoint of handling this in the best possible way. I think that was it, uh, uh, Abdul. I, and I, I really know that it's going to be now more than 10 p.m. Uh, in, in Canada. And I know I'm, I'm get, you know, extending my time limit. But That's I really, right. really want to thank you for taking out time for us, for the kids, for the student fraternity, for the ACCA, ACCA fraternity at large. We really really thank you from the you know of course from the heart in terms of you know you being here and taking out and carving out time because i, I know you know working for a you know for a corporate is is never gonna be easy for anyone so you know carving out time is is really good so thanks very much for that really appreciate anything for the students 
I good. <laughs> Thank you. Any any last words, Abdul? You want to say to the students before we really sign off? Uh, just believe in yourself. Um, because uh, there were times that so just because I just because I got an uh, All India rank doesn't does not mean I failed. I have also had my fair share of um, failures when I was uh, studying for P four and P seven. uh yet uh if you are consistent uh and you believe in yourself uh, you you uh, you uh, reach your uh, final goal that's about it thank you abdul thank you for such a motivating uh, ending and such a motivating uh, i would say uh, uh thing that you that you mentioned for the students really really thank you for that and uh, uh you know as i said this is uh, you know we spoke on that this is just the beginning abdul we would be calling you uh, at various forums Anytime. to talk to the students be their mentor and and help them in terms of you know reaching on to their goals and so that they can also look upon to you in terms of uh, you know getting the success path from you and reaching out there thank you very much it was pleasure for you to be here thank you all right bye bye bye